As a business person, your objective is to turn a profit and make a success of your business. You work hard for your success to guarantee your loved ones a bright future. Now what happens when your success makes you and your family a target in society? You get back from work one afternoon and your kids are not back from school, which is unusual. Once the sun sets, you start to get worried. Come night time, now you start making phone calls to friends and family and you also report it to the police. And then later in that night, you get an anonymous phone call and a voice on the other line telling you, We've got your kids. Don't talk to the police or the media if you don't want any problems. Pay 50 million rands ransom to an overseas bank account and you can have your kids back home safe with you. Mind you, they know you, they know your family, they know your business, they know everything about you. So you can't even mess with them. What do you do? Now, it's a dangerous time to be a businessman in South Africa. South Africa has seen a spike recently in kidnapping cases. A significant increase over the past uh, few years. These are two categories. One is international crime syndicates. Uh, they've got international links. So they will kidnap the victim, demand millions of rands in ransom. Very often they want the money paid uh, in a foreign country, uh, either Dubai uh, or uh, Pakistan or another country. South Africa has seen a spike in kidnappings, especially people operating cash-based businesses. This may sound like something from a movie, but it's a reality for some people. We've seen this in the case of the Morty brothers, and Shawin's case from Cape Town, and many others. But also recently, we've been witnessing what it's called transnational kidnappings in South Africa, where people of a different nationality will come to the country, kidnap someone from their own country who's living in South Africa for a ransom. We've seen this trend with Somalians, Pakistanis, Ethiopians, and many more. It's yeah. very simple. You want me to release him. Am I right? You want me, you want me I must release him. Yeah, please, my friend. Please. I'm no, I want to make it simple. I make it simple for you. Hmm? I know already. Your husband he explained to me. Huh? It's not long. Your husband he explained. Uh -huh. It will not take long for your family to put together three money. He is huh? the one he tells me. Please take my advice. If you go to the police, I know already you went to open a file by the police station. Am I right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Already you went, but listen to me. Mm. The police, they can't help you. I know, you know in your community already. So if how do I make it close, okay? How do I make it no, no. close? No, no, you, you can't close, close it. Yeah, yeah. But you don't cooperate with them. You don't tell them what is happening. Mm -hmm. You don't tell them anything. Mm -hmm. You just say, no, they didn't phone. No, they didn't phone. You understand? There are cases where also the person who's been kidnapped, you find that they are operating a cash-based illegal business. And then after they are kidnapped, it's hard for them to even report the case to the police because it will alert the police to the activities that they've been getting up to. So the kidnappers know that there's a big chance that they will get away with this and nothing is going to happen as long as the law is not involved. Some cases, people don't report it to the police because they are scared of putting their loved one's life in danger. People even go as far as going to loan sharks to borrow money if they can't access finance from the bank or go as far as stealing money to try and secure their loved ones. These crimes are usually operated by syndicates running crime enterprises and even extortion rings. It's been said these groups may even be involved in heavy crimes such as cash and transit robberies. These kidnappings are seen as less risky because they don't carry a heavy sentence like the CIT robberies. Now, let's look at the Morty brothers case. In September of 2021, four brothers were on their way to school when their vehicle, a BMW, was intercepted by two vehicles. A gang of suspects, armed with R5 rifles and handguns, broke a window and then unlocked the vehicle. A grey SUV then arrived on the scene and the children were bundled into that SUV. The driver of the BMW was found some time later. He was unharmed. The brothers came from a wealthy Morty family who ran a successful car dealership in Polukwane. The family has been involved in the motor industry for more than 20 years. And the boys were found in Vuyani three weeks after they were taken. They were unharmed. It was later claimed that the family paid a ransom of 50 million rands for the boys' return. At the time, News24 reported the family paid the ransom in bundles of cash, securing the safe release of their sons. Police were not allowed to speak to anyone in the family. 
Now, without the statement from the boys and support from the family, the police couldn't do anything after that. But a spokesperson for the family denied that ransom was paid for the boys, and SAPS revealed that the investigation had been stalled because the father had interdicted the police from speaking to the children. The family has also relocated to Dubai according to reports. Now here's a strange part about the story. Couple of days after the kidnapping, 200 million rands worth of cocaine gets stolen from the Hawks office in Port Shepston, KZN. After it was reported in the news, a tweet from an account called at Vico underscore DBN came out saying that after the drugs went missing, the Moti boys will be released watch the space and guess what <laughs> true to what vico dbn said the boys were back home the following day How much I, you got? I knew a tax him. How much you got? I got said twenty, and when you attacked him, also hey, there well, was money for twenty. Someone is delivering by nine o'clock. I I'm still asking again. Don't take chances. No, sir. So you you, you were Don't already getting. Let me tell you something. Yes, sir. My friends are telling you out. You want to pay or you don't. I want to face her, but let me tell you, way when uh, Barry, when you attack I'm him, saying, also the you courts are selling you out. I know you have the money. Tortured and chained for 21 days, 25-year-old Mosin Patel says his kidnappers initially demanded a million rand ransom, but his family could only pay a hundred thousand rand. The money was deposited into the kidnapper's bank account by his father, who's based in India. But Patel was never released. Patel, who owns a supermarket, says he knows some of his kidnappers and he suspects business squabbles were behind his abduction. My business uh, uh, is good and uh, on the underbug, right? And one of the Indian only me of this in town, all of Pakistanis. So they don't like, they don't like also. They're not happy. It's a business of my good. They say, don't sell that, don't sell that, don't sell that. It was fighting about many times. And actually, I don't, I don't think it was too like this for me.